Hello, and thank you for joining me. Today, we are returning to Fallout 76, where we're going to spend another 1,000 script with the Purveyor on three-star ranged legendary weapons. And as usual, I will take a few moments to talk about each weapon and, you know, about what makes each one good, bad, or indifferent. So let's go on ahead and get started and see what we get today. So for our first weapon, we get an Exterminator Short Western Revolver with replenishing action points with each kill and plus 50 damage resistance while aiming. So the Exterminator's effect is probably one of the less useful of the Slayer's effects just because there's not really a whole lot of times that you're going to be actively seeking out bugs or mire lurks for really any reason. Sure, you're going to kill which, whichever ones you run across, but generally speaking, they're just not the type of enemy that you go out of your way to hunt. So, that said, even if you are going to be fighting them fairly regularly, it's not necessarily worth keeping a weapon around specifically for them. I would prefer to have a weapon that does well against them and other creatures as well, so... Yeah, not in love with the first effect. The second effect, the uh, replenishing action points with each kill, that's a decent effect. You know, it's not amazing, but on a pistol, it could be very good just because pistols are a bit underpowered, so getting some extra damage from targeting the weak points with VATs and getting those VATs critical hits as well is definitely a good way to go if you're going to be using pistols. So being able to get some extra action points whenever you kill something, that's a good thing because it's just going to keep you uh, churning through enemies using vats and getting that extra damage. So that's a good thing there. The plus 50 damage resistance while aiming, it's a decent effect. I I'm not really a big fan of that effect. It it's much better on a heavy weapon where I would be doing a lot more aiming. I would definitely use a pistol like this in VATS generally as opposed to doing a lot of aiming down the sights, so I wouldn't get a lot out of it. If you're the type of player who does like to aim down sights no matter what weapon you're using, then you'll get a little more use out of it. But even then, if you've got a damage resistance of in the neighborhood around, you know, three to four hundred, you're going to start seeing diminishing returns. You will see some benefit from it. It's not like you're not going to get any benefit at all from it, but it's just going to be a lot less than what you might be hoping for. So overall, this one's a bit of a dud, so let's go on ahead and move on to the next one. This one's actually pretty interesting here. We got an Aristocrat's minigun with plus 25% damage while aiming and a 15% faster reload. So the Aristocrat's effect is actually one of the best effects for full health builds in my opinion because it's just not very hard to keep 32,000 caps on your character. Uh, especially once you get into the late game and you've bought most of what you really care about from the uh, vendors in the White Spring and the robots at the train stations and such so at that point it becomes very easy to keep that kind of caps and even if you're below 32,000 you're still going to see some benefit you just won't get the full 50 percent uh bonus that you get when you're at 32,000 or more so overall a very good effect with very few drawbacks the plus 25 percent damage while aiming is exactly the kind of effect i love seeing on a heavy weapon because like i say i aim those down the sights because they just are not particularly useful for vats you can use them to some extent in vats certainly but they're going to chew through your ap especially something with a fire rate like the minigun just very very quickly so even if you are trying to use it with vats, you're probably going to end up having to do a fair bit of hip firing or aiming down the sights. So getting some extra damage while you're aiming down the sights is a very good thing. And then the 15% faster reload, it's... I don't know if it's the effect I would necessarily ideally want on this weapon for the third star, but it's a very good one because the reload on a heavy gun is generally pretty slow so anything that speeds it up is going to be good now it would be a little bit better on something like a plasma cat or not plasma caster a uh, gatling plasma or a an ultrasight gatling laser or something like that you know a core weapon because those weapons you generally do not want to reload until the core is empty otherwise you're going to end up with a whole bunch of half filled or less cores in your inventory the minigun doesn't have that problem so you can reload it freely between battles and things like that so you probably won't get as much use out of that third star as you would for like i say a core based weapon but overall this is a very good weapon so 
Yeah, thank you, Murmur. Let's see what else we get today. See if she's got anything else good for us. Ah, uh, this one is a bit of a dud. Kind of to be expected after a good one. We got a Berserker's Gauss Pistol with plus 50% limb damage and Vats Critical Meter filling 15% faster. So the Berserker's effect is not as bad as it used to be because when they rebalanced the legendary effects, they removed the debuff. Well, they reduced the debuff for the weapon as far as when you're not wearing armor or when you are wearing armor. So it's not technically worse than a non-legendary version, although you can't really get a non-legendary version of the Gauss Pistol. So yeah, the really not the effect that I would want on the first star at all for this weapon, although it is something that you can put a suppressor on. So if you are somebody who enjoys the Berserker's builds, then this could be a good weapon for you. Unfortunately, it's untradeable, so even if you wanted it, I couldn't give it to you, even though I would be more than happy to do so. So uh, the plus 50% limb damage, that is really very unexciting in my opinion, especially on a weapon with high base damage like the Gauss Pistol. So you're generally going to be trying to put your enemies down as quickly as possible with this weapon. Generally, a shot or two should do it. So, especially if you're, you know, using bats and targeting the weak points. So that means that you really don't need to do a whole lot of crippling of limbs. So it's just really not doing a whole lot there. The Vats Critical Meter filling 15% faster, that is a good thing, especially if you're a full health build, because you won't have the plus 15 or so to your luck from the unyielding armor, so getting some extra crit, uh, critical meter filling faster is definitely a good thing if you are going to be using this thing in Vats. This is a powerful enough weapon as far as pistols go that you could use it outside of Vats and still do pretty well, I think, but I, I still think the best way to use it is in Vats, but... Overall, this one's a bit of a dud. Let's go on ahead and move on to the next one. And here we got another Western Revolver, this time a Suppressors, with 25% faster fire rate and fast critical meter filling 15% faster. So the Suppressors effect is... It's not a bad effect. I mean, it does do what it says. It's just... I don't see a lot of situations in the game where it's really all that important to reduce the enemy's damage output. Maybe in the Decryption Daily Ops, where the enemies have 90% armor penetration, it could be useful, although this is definitely not the kind of weapon I would want to be using in that sort of uh, Daily Ops. So, overall, not not an exciting first star. It, it, it could be useful if you wanted to play a support build, but even so, I still think you'd be better off with a different weapon than this one. The 25% faster fire rate is an excellent effect, on fully automatic weapons, but it loses a lot on semi-automatic weapons that, for the most part, can fire as quickly as you can pull the trigger. So, you may see a little bit of benefit as far as being able to pull the trigger a little bit faster, especially on some slower firing weapons, but overall, it's just not doing a whole lot for semi-automatic weapons, unfortunately. And the Vats Critical Meter filling 15% faster? Well, that is very good, especially on a pistol for the reasons I mentioned before. You know, getting some extra damage from those crits and getting more of those crits is definitely a good thing. It's going to help you uh, mitigate some of the weakness of pistols. But overall, this one is pretty much another dud. Let's go on ahead and see what else we get. And we definitely got yet another dud. We've got a Black Powder, a Berserker's Black Powder Rifle with plus 50% VATS hit chance and 15% faster reload. So unfortunately, this thing could actually have been half decent anyway if it had a better first star. But this weapon cannot be suppressed. So as soon as you fire it, you're pretty much giving away your, pos your position. And it's much harder to stay alive in this game with no armor than it is at low health. So you're probably going to end up dying a lot if you try to use get the berserker the benefit from the berserker's effect with this weapon. The plus 50% vats hit chance, that would actually have been very good if the first star was better just because it will let you target the weak points uh, much more effectively, which allows you to probably with this weapon get a lot of one-hit kills, which is exactly what you want with a weapon like this that is not necessarily slow firing, but you have to reload it between every shot, and it's just a very slow reload animation, so essentially very slow firing. And then the 15% faster reload, that is actually very good on a weapon like this, especially since you do have to reload it between every shot. You would get a lot of benefit out of that on this weapon. So yeah, the second and third stars are actually very good for this particular weapon, but the first star is a dud. So 
Any, let's go ahead and move on to the next one and see what else we get. And here we've got a Ghoul Slayer's Pipe Pistol with plus 25% damage while aiming and faster movement speed while aiming. So the Ghoul Slayer's effect is probably, I'd say kind of middling because it's not the worst of the Slayer's effects by any means. There are those big bloated ghouls that do take a bit of damage to take down, but for the most part, the ghouls that you encounter in most situations are pretty squishy and go down pretty easily without a legendary weapon. So it's not necessarily worth keeping a legendary weapon around specifically to kill ghouls, at least in my opinion. So yeah, that's why I would call the Ghoul Slayer's Effect at least somewhat middling. It, it does have some benefit because there are times when you might actually be going and hunting ghouls. Um, it's probably a little bit less common than it used to be since they made West Tech instanced and you can just especially with the team keep running through that if you really want to grind experience quickly but before that you would also you know go to like the golf club and Charleston Capitol building and the boroughs and places like that where there were lots of ghouls to grind experience so and you know I'm certain some players do I still do sometimes so but overall not exciting for the first star the plus 25 percent damage while aiming Again, that's a very good effect, especially if you're the type of player who loves to aim down the sights. This is the type of weapon that I would probably use in VATS mostly, so I wouldn't get a lot of benefit out of it. But I know there are players out there who are not VATS uh, fans like I am, so for those players that would probably be a much better effect on this weapon than it is for me. The fast movement speed while aiming, that's a bit of a dud in my opinion. Because if you're running the Speed Demon Mutation, and I suspect that most endgame players probably will be, just because it's nice to run faster and reload your weapons faster, with such a low downside from it, then it's really not doing anything for you at all. Even if you are, you know, running around the battlefield while aiming. And I don't think a lot of players are, so even if you're not running the Speed Demon Mutation, it's probably just not doing a whole lot for you because you're probably just not doing that a whole lot. If you are, please be sure to let me know in the comments. I, I would love to, you know, hear from someone who does do that a lot, but it's definitely not something that I do. So anyway, let's go on ahead and keep going here, see what else we get. And here we've got a Furious Pipe Revolver with plus 50% bats hit chance and 90% reduced weight. So the Furious effect is not one of my favorite effects just because it takes so long to really warm up. I think it would be much better if instead of gaining 5% per hit on the same target, it gained 10% so that it took fewer hits to get to the full benefit from it. So that, you know, instead of taking 9 or 10 shots on the same target before you see the full benefit from the Furious effect, it would only take 4 or 5. That, that would make it much better in my opinion. But this is definitely not the ideal weapon for it just because you're going to pretty much empty your magazine before you gain the full benefit from it. And there's no way to make the pipe revolver, or really any revolver, into a fully automatic weapon, which is really what you want with the Furious effect, especially you would prefer something with a much faster fire rate than even just a normal rifle. So, yeah, I'm not in love with that. So uh, the plus 50% VATS hit chance, that's actually very good on this pipe revolver because, again, you know, being a revolver, it's going to be a bit underpowered. And that is the kind of thing that will help mitigate that by being able to target the weak points and get some extra damage from VATS criticals as well. So being able to uh, target those weak points more precisely, as well as getting a little bit of extra range from the weapon because... It actually helps to offset some of the accuracy drop-off once you get past the range on the card. Although you still will see the damage drop-off, so that's important to keep in mind. But sometimes it's still worth being able to do some damage as opposed to none when you're quite a ways away. So overall, that's a very good second star. The third star, 90% reduced weight. It's much better on something like a heavy gun, in my opinion. It's... It's just not that good on this weapon, especially if you mod it out, because it's important to keep in mind that when you mod out a weapon with a 90% reduced weight effect, the mods that you put on the weapon are not affected by the 90% reduced weight effect, so they add their full weight to the weapon, and this weapon has a fair number of mods there, so... And also, the Pipe Revolver is probably not all that heavy to begin with, so... 
yeah anyway this one's a bit of a dud let's go on ahead and we've got three more here let's see what we can get and here we've got an instigating missile launcher with plus 50 percent vats hit chance and faster movement speed while aiming so the instigating effect is a bit of a lie it actually does not do what it says on the box it deals double the base damage of the weapon if the target is at full health not double the damage you see on the card assuming that you've equipped any sort of perk or gear or mutation or anything that increases your damage output so that's important to keep in mind but it still can be good on damage on weapons with very high base damage and the missile launcher does qualify so being able to do double damage uh, when the target is at full health is a good thing, and I suspect that that does affect the splash damage from the explosion as well. So, yeah, I would definitely consider that a good effect. Probably not the best effect for a missile launcher, but it's something that you could definitely run around and have some fun with when you find yourself with, say, for example, the seven missiles I somehow ended up with in my inventory, and you'd rather shoot something with them than drop them. The plus 50% bats hit chance that is good on a weapon like this, although you probably don't need the extra damage from targeting the weak points to really kill things with it, but it's nice to be able to put it on target very easily. The drawback with using VATS with a launcher weapon like this is that if you miss your target, then the weapon, then the uh, projectile will just kind of go off into nothingness, or at least it can, and you won't get your explosion at all from it. So that's a bit of a drawback, but the plus 50% VATS hit chance will help mitigate that because you'll miss a whole lot less if you're using VATS. And then the fast movement speed while aiming, again, not one of my favorite effects. Um, you know, I went over that before, pretty much the same reasons here. So let's go on ahead and move on to the next one. And here we've got an anti-armor broadsider with replenishing action points with each kill and plus 50 percent damage while aiming so the broadsider is not really one of my favorite weapons at all although you know you could run around i suppose with it and have some fun the same way with your missile launcher you know just when you end up with the for example the nine cannonballs i have in my inventory here somehow uh going and shooting things with them instead of uh just dropping them I would much prefer to have the 90% reduced weight on this weapon to do that with, though. Although the anti-armor effect is very good, so, you know, if you are going to run, run around with a broadsider, an anti-armor version is definitely not a bad choice. In fact, anti-armor is really never a bad choice for any weapon. The replenishing action points with each kill... I don't know that I would really use this weapon in VATS. This is probably something that I would aim down sights. Although, it does seem like the kind of weapon that you could use effectively in VATS. So, if you were, then that effect could be very good with this weapon. If you're not, then it's probably not going to do much for you at all. And then the plus 50 damage resistance while aiming. It does not synergize well with the second effect. But, if you are going to use it the way I would probably use it, by aiming down the sights, then... That's a pretty good effect on it, although, again, it's going to have diminishing returns if you've already got some solid armor in the three to 400 damage res resistance range. So, overall, I would call this one on the lower side of mediocre, probably. We've got one more try here. We've gotten one good one so far. Let's see what we get for our last one. And this one is mostly a dud, although it's not the worst. We got a Mutant Slayer's Combat Rifle with plus 50% VATS hit chance and your VATS critical meter filling 15% faster. So the Mutant Slayer's effect is probably one of the more useful of the Slayer's effects just because there are lots of times in the game that you're going to be going out and actively fighting mutants, uh, super mutants, and you know you're going to be doing that. Such as any time that you're going to be grinding for experience at West Tech or when it's super mutants in the daily ops or that sort of thing. So, you know... It's, it could be worth keeping a weapon around for dealing with super mutants because they're definitely not the squishiest enemies in the game, so being able to put them down a little bit faster could be worthwhile. The plus 50% VATS hit chance, that's actually, again, very good, especially on a weapon like this. The combat rifle is not necessarily the best commando or rifleman weapon out there, but it's definitely a solid mid-range choice. Its damage is a bit lower than the fixer and the handmaid, uh, so that makes it a bit undesirable in that regard, and the fire rates will be the same. But overall, it'll still serve you pretty well, especially if you don't have anything better yet. 
The Mass Critical Meter filling 15% faster. That uh, synergizes very well with the second star there, especially if you're a full health build and being able to target the weak points, get some extra damage from the crits, and get some extra crits from that third star. That's all very good. So this one is... I'd call it pretty mediocre, but it's also the kind of weapon that I could see a lower level level player getting a lot of use out of until they got their hands on something better. So, anyway, we got one pretty good one here with the uh, minigun, the Aristocrats minigun, but not a whole lot else that was too exciting. But I appreciate you tuning in. As always, if you enjoyed this content, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out, and it doesn't cost you any money. And until next time... Thank you for watching.